Visit our fabulous sponsor, Ka Gold Jewelry, link in the description below. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of March 10, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We are in the full throes of Mercury retrograde, which is about to feel like we are going more deep into a retrograde season. However, it is this week that we have beautiful energy playing out between Mars and Neptune and especially Mars and Saturn, which means that there will be inspiration, empowerment, and practical gains as well. Now, of course, with the Mercury retrograde, we do need to be careful. The best types of opportunities are ultimately those that have come back around in some way. Not the time to sign contracts, as they say with Mercury retrograde, but especially with a week like this. So there's a whole lot here to talk about. So let's start with the fact that Mercury is still retrograde in the sign of Pisces. And Mercury isn't necessarily able to bring forward its very best qualities in this sign. And it only adds to what normally can be a confusing time with Mercury retrograde. Well, what is happening this week is that the sun is going to meet Mercury, and this is going to add that much more power to this energy. And we are also going to have both of these planets speaking in harmony with Pluto. Now that's going to add intensity. And then we are also going to have both of these planets speaking in conversations of tension with Jupiter. Now that is going to help us to maximize uh, the energy of confusion that will very likely be there. And so if there ever was a week to go with the flow, to pace yourself, to allow yourself to be patient and see where it is that your feelings, your inspirations, or even your mind, where it is that it wants to go without necessarily feeling like you need to make any very consequential decisions. Well, this is good energy in that regard to help you to do just that. It is ultimately the energy of Pisces that asks us to consider where it is our most powerful energetic healing can take place. And the thing is that it's not always what we think. It is often the case that when we think about healing, we think about the things that have hurt us in the past, but there are times when it is forgiveness and the forgiveness of self in particular for who we were and giving love to the past selves that we were that can be the most powerful healing experience of all. I do think that with the sign of Pisces having to do ultimately with compassion, we are also considering where it is that healthy forms of compassion lie and where it is instead that we can consider turning that compassion around towards ourselves, but still while being in a space of acceptance, moving towards the change that we desire. It is Pluto that is an energy of profound transformation. The type of conversation playing out here is called a sextile. And this is considered an easy aspect. It is a harmonious connection. However, it's the type of harmonious connection that asks us to take ownership, to take action. It has just enough of a sense that we need to do something if things are going to improve at all that ensures that we don't get lazy with this energy. The square though of Jupiter to this configuration of the Sun and Mercury does suggest that there may be times when we are being overly optimistic where the situation may not call for it. Uh, being overly braggadocious, if you will, where it is that the circumstances are asking us instead to bring emotion, to bring empathy. And it is also possible that we are having to look at our own fears, so not seeing things as optimistically as we deserve and instead having to either confront or allowing ourselves to feel the fullness of the things that we are afraid of. Now, whether that is the things that didn't work in the past, but especially where it is that we imagine the directions in which things can go. And by things, I mean our hopes, our dreams, our efforts, our endeavors. Our mind can take us on a journey now that feels as if it is uh, going with the flow, but sometimes that flow is going uh, very high and then sometimes 
the other way. And this is ultimately asking us to turn that lens of patience on ourselves as there may be some of us out there who are riding some important emotion at this time. Now what we do have this week is what I think will be the great saving grace this week, which is Mars moving through the sign of Taurus. Now it is going to be at the very beginning of the week that Mars will reach out in harmony with Neptune. Neptune is also in Pisces, moving through the part of the sky that the Mercury is in, that Mercury's retrograde in, uh, that the sun is in as well. And to me, this is about transforming what otherwise would just be hopes and wishes and ideas and, and creative insights and inspiration and actually grounding it, ensuring that it counts for something. The sign of Taurus tends to be one that is very embodied. It's very interested in what is happening on Earth, what is ultimately uh, that we are moving towards. And it is interested in results, as a lot of the Earth signs tend to be. But more than that, the sign of Taurus is about enjoying the earthly incarnation, enjoying our senses, and ultimately being fully present with our senses. There is a saying that Buddha was a Taurus, and a part of the reason is because we know that culturally speaking, at least in the West, we celebrate his birthday on the 4th of April. However, uh, he was said to be born on the fourth day of the fourth month of the Chinese calendar, which puts that right around the uh, early to mid part of May. So we know that, yes, astrologically, uh, Western astrology speaking, he was certainly a Taurus. Um, and I think it's because of that this understanding of how it is that when we are present with our senses, when we are completely focused on uh, our touch and our uh, sense of sensation and smell and sight, it is in these moments that we experience presence. And it is in the moments of presence that we are most able to experience what it means to be human. And to be human means to in some way be a representation of an incarnation of divine energy. And it is ultimately by being truly present that we are able to experience divinity more directly than we might otherwise. And given that Mars is in Taurus, it is asking us not only to tap into that Taurian present energy, but also asking us to know ourselves in the process, to tap into a well of understanding about who we are, and then acting from that place, moving forward through the world from that place of connection to our own truth and living in integrity with it. Well, the living part, the actually manifesting a life that aligns with that truth becomes that much more important when it is that Mars is in the sign of Taurus. So there's this beautiful connection to Neptune happening early in the week. I love this. I think that this is going to be uh, creative. It's gonna be inspired. It's gonna allow us to hope and believe that great things are possible, that magic and miracles are possible. And chances are we'll feel as if we've touched it just a little bit. But it is as we move later into the week, right around Thursday, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet. Well, that is when Mars is going to reach out in supreme harmony with Saturn. Now, this type of conversation happens only about once a year. And when it does happen, it speaks powerfully to a time when our actions and our intentions align. It speaks to a time where we have a sense of where it is that we're going and where we want to go. The mature, the responsible, the most successful route that is going to move us towards our unique definition of success. And in the process, we understand how it is that our actions can actually align with that stated intention. We have a view towards the big picture, but also a view towards our larger legacy and the legacy that we are creating in our moments right now. Now this can make for remarkably successful uh, and impactful action that does take place. And it can also mean that there are going to be quite a few people who feel as if some opportunity to improve their lives has shown up. It starts as inspiration in the early part of the week, but then starts to manifest into a changed lived experience 
as a result of what was, in the early part of the week, just an idea or a hope or a promise. Now, all of this is happening, of course, under the light of Mercury retrograde. So again, if at all possible, I know that you have to trust your life, you've got to trust what's in front of you to do, but if you can help it, try not to sign contracts, especially with a week like this. This particular Mercury retrograde especially, it just has so much energy there that is not necessarily as direct as we may like. Um, we've been in Mercury retrograde season since the middle of February. And since then, we have had uh, certain connections, ongoing connections taking place. Mercury and Neptune, very notably. Mercury and Jupiter, Mercury and Saturn, Mercury and Pluto. Like these have been the ongoing dances that are really defining this current Mercury retrograde season. And right now we may not even realize where it is that things are not clear. Our will is so strong to improve our circumstances, which is a beautiful thing. That's Pluto. That's also Mars and Taurus as well. And our determination certainly is there. Again, Pluto and Mars being activated in powerful ways this week. However, what it is that is not clear yet is going to become clear once we get into April. And it is also in April that chances are we will be filled with gratitude as well for the journey that we have been on since the middle of February when the Mercury retrograde season began. It is then, once we get into April, that a lot of the larger lessons are gonna feel like they've come together for us in powerful ways and we are more clearly able to express ourselves, to think for ourselves, and to understand our best steps forward, but more importantly, understand where it is that we are now ready for healthy closures to take place and where it is part of the closure is understanding whom it is that we no longer need to be that we can step into a more empowered more present yes but more current version of the person that we are today if the sign of taurus is anything it has to do it today like i said it's about being present and being present means you're focused on right now and right now is today and part of the power now is to understand that your journey as you move through life is one that is multifaceted. Yes, it has the emotional, it has the spiritual. We've got lots of that thanks to the Mercury retrograde season and all the different connections that I've spoken about, not only for this week, but the larger season at that. But also this week, we are reminded that we are embodied. A part of our expression, our divine path, includes our physical manifestation. It includes actually considering what it is that we hope to live, having a goal, making a plan, being open to seeing where it is that the universe would want us to go while moving towards what it is that we are owning, that we are worthy to move towards. It is now that powerful lessons of worthiness are going to show up for a lot of people. At the same time, the power to let go of any voices that get in the way of owning that sense of empowered self-love and self-possession, as I like to call it. And what do I mean when I say self-possession? It means to own yourself completely and to accept yourself completely. That's ultimately what it means to say self-possessed. It means acceptance. Now, what kind of, as it said, radical acceptance can you practice in your life now? Well, I'll tell you, the root of radical acceptance is being present and being in the moment for you, understanding that this moment is in many ways all that there is. What I love about this week for us, well, look, there's so much here, but if I had to choose one thing, I would choose that Mars and supremely harmonious connecting to Saturn. It's Mars trying Saturn. That is what I love most about this week because it reminds us to live. It reminds us to be here now. And it reminds us that it is through our senses that some of our most profound realizations about spirit, about emotion, and about our own power can be found. And it is only when we allow ourselves to fully embrace all that we are, the, the physical manifestation, but also where we are in terms of our spiritual journeys and our emotional journeys, 
that we truly step into a power more glorious than anything that we could know before. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'm so grateful for it. What do you love about this week? What are you excited about? Let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love reading you guys. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and so much more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Please do visit our sponsor, Ka Gold Jewelry. They have incredibly beautiful jewelry uh, that is created at specific astrological uh, moments. And they have ritual jewelry. They have jewelry that represents just about every, if not all, I wouldn't say all, but most of the most profound uh, spiritual traditions that have been and are in the world today, including some of the spiritual traditions that I spoke about in this video. If nothing else, it's beautiful to look at. And so you might want to have a look at their website. Please do use the link in the description below. I am in the middle of Synchronicity University. I'm having so much fun. We are halfway through. Thank you so much to all the students that join us live. Thank you to all the students who have signed up, who catch us on the replay. I appreciate each and every one of you, whether you just drop in and listen, whether you're interacting, or whether it is, again, you're catching us on the replay. Uh, thank you for seeing me as some small part of your sacred journey. This particular session is based on the intention uh, to give people tools and insights that ultimately I hope and I believe will help them and help you to navigate these very special times that we are living in. Times of transformation that need hope, that need an infusion of wisdom to appreciate how it is that we are changing at this time individually and as a collective. Now I spoke a lot about these big changes that are taking place in the year ahead video. So you might want to have a look at that in my YouTube channel. Uh, but yes, we're talking about the tools. We're looking at the chart in new ways. And if it is that you haven't joined us yet, you can catch the replay of the classes that have already taken place. And of course, two more classes coming up this month, Saturday afternoons uh, live 2 p.m. EST. Again, catch us on the replay if you can't make that exact time. So what are the classes? Well, so far we've done classes on uh, finding your higher power in the astrology chart. So this is about you understanding what it is that divine energy is for you, what you need from a higher power. Uh, and to move yourself towards that, to consciously tap into that. Uh, just earlier today, we did a class uh, on moments of change and we dived into some mythologies that are connected to Pluto, Uranus and Saturn. And we also talked a lot about Carl Jung as well. So it was a lot of fun and his work and his belief of how so much of life is about uh, crisis, chaos, and calm, and how we're always in the midst of one or the other. We're always in the midst of one of these phases. So we explore that as well. Now coming up, future classes include uh, changing bonds, which has to do with transforming difficult relationships, which I think is going to be one of the more useful and rewarding classes, hopefully, uh, that I offer as part of this session. And also, we're going to do a class on forgiveness, understanding what it is uh, that you experience forgiveness as and how to move yourself towards that space of acceptance and surrender. And ultimately, I do believe forgiveness is a state of empowerment. And that is part of the journey uh, that we are going to explore coming up ahead. I hope that you will join us. Check out the links in the description below. Of course, I have live events coming up as well, new events uh, being added on as we speak, uh, but events that I am confirmed for are in May. I will be in Vancouver and in Seattle, and Labor Day weekend, I will be in Baltimore. Really looking forward to connecting with friends and fans in real time. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun together. And yeah, lots more coming up as well.
And I want to thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I want to give you a little bit of a heads up, a little bit of a preview of what's coming up ahead next week. Next week is uh, one of those weeks where we've got a full moon in a part of the sky in the sign of Libra that has to do with partnerships. And we've also got Venus also kicking into gear by connecting with other power players. And so far as Venus has been moving through the sign of uh, Aquarius has essentially been unaspected last week and this week as well, which means that for a lot of us, love and the experience of love and flirtation has largely been compartmentalized. It's been kept off in its own little area. Well, it is going to be next week that we are going to start experiencing greater integration of love energy in our own lives and in our interactions with each other. Now that's still there, but at least for this week, a lot of it is dreamy, hopeful energy. And a lot of it is very passionate energy. Mars in the sign of Taurus can be uh, very embodied and enjoying the earthly experience, which includes connecting with other people. But that love energy that we think about when we talk about Venus, well, that is energy that's going to grow that much stronger next week. So there's a lot to look forward to. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. Again, thank you for seeing me as some small part of your sacred journey. I'm truly so grateful for it. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.